Hello everyone, it's Takuya here, and welcome back to a Hearts of Iron 4 video. Yes, my friends, we are back in the world of Road to 56, except unlike the previous videos that I have done, this is not something that is going to be focusing on Scandinavia, even though I am definitely looking at your comments to see what it is that we should be doing next with those. No, instead, for anyone who is curious, I actually stream on Twitch, and in this previous week on Saturday, what we had done for our big multiplayer Hearts of Iron 4 game that we do every single Saturday at 10 a.m., I had played Switzerland, which, mind you, I'm telling you this right now, guys, this easily has some of the most broken stuff that we have seen in Hearts of Iron 4 yet. I mean, we're talking ludicrous, insane bonuses. And that's without taking any other kind of territory. So today I figured, why not show you all how you can totally ruin all of your friends' experiences and completely break the balance of the game in any kind of multiplayer game that you could potentially do in Road to 56. After all, it's a very popular mod that people like to play online, so you know what? Why not show how to ruin everyone else's fun? Ah, Switzerland. The best speed bump of Europe. Absolutely. You know what? Just for the sake of the hell of it, we're going to keep historical AI off because I just want to see the world burn. Like, every single time we play a multiplayer game on Twitch. But before we get into today's video, I wanted to thank today's sponsor Nero Gaming. And for anyone not aware of what this is, it's a pretty cool little thing. Nero Gaming is simply a free email newsletter that is going to give you five minute stories on all these kinds of little aspects in gaming from sandbox games, survival, simulation, whatever it is that you're looking at. Because guys, come on, let's be real. When you're looking at games that I play like Hearts of Iron and others, these things can take a long time to learn. And the busier you get, it's going to be harder to know exactly what kind of games are going to be good for you to want to get into in the first place. And that's where Nero Gaming comes in. Because as a simple newsletter, what it does is twice a week, it's going to cover new games as well as highlighting DLCs, mods, and other little details with sales that are interesting and are going to help you kind of figure things out for the industry. There's also some rather interesting stories that the newsletter includes, such as stories about how AI is changing things with MMOs, which is honestly just fascinating. I can't wait to see what the future is going to bring us. So guys, come on, it's free, so go ahead and use the link down in my description, or you can sign up by going to nerogaming.co. Just enter your email, and that's it. It's completely free. Go ahead and sign up. Yes, my friends, Switzerland. You all know already how this works because I've done several videos on Switzerland before in the past, and really, this mod doesn't change all that much with their focus tree, though it definitely cleans some aspects of it up and doesn't make it as restrictive as it can be in the base game for what you can choose. Sadly, of course, for the mod, they did nerf Spirit of St. Bernard because, of course, that in multiplayer settings is an absolutely broken thing where you could potentially get up to 90 or even 100% return rate for all of your manpower our savings. Like, you will have units that quite literally will never die, you will never run out of manpower, unless they get surrounded and instantly killed. But either way, that's not what I'm here to show off today. No, I'm here to show off a build for Switzerland that is truly mind-bogglingly insane. Technocratic Switzerland. Switzerland is going to be the most powerful university in the world that can change the balance of power for any other player in the game. And here's how you do it. First things first, we have to go over here and activate arm neutrality, make our way to national defense, and get ourselves some civilian factories to start boosting stuff up. We don't need to do increased defense budget because that's military factories and to be honest we're not trying to build up a military industry just yet we are trying to focus on everything that we can possibly do to build up our industry for civilian factories and simultaneously get research so yes our neutrality which is going to give us the passive spirit of helvetia which is going to give us daily power gain but simultaneously hurt our construction for anything military wise as well as hurt our war support but it's okay in the meantime we're gonna get some infrastructure and then simultaneously focus on beelining up here's some civilian factories research wise there's a couple things we need off the bat engineering of course for our our research and then basic stuff for industry naturally and srd we're going to go over here and get the ends because the ends is going to be very valuable because it's going to increase the amount of factories that we can get in each one of our states and from here we see what actually happens with the world truthfully this could all end horribly depending on the circumstances of what the enemy chooses in here and by enemy i mean literally anyone in the world because who knows what they're going to actually choose and you all know how things work for switzerland as i've already said in the beginning you're going to be getting an event called swiss guiding principles which is going to give you three options allowing you to choose to stick with democratic and neutral be not necessarily so neutral but maybe start focusing on other stuff but still maybe be democratic this is kind of the middle path and gives the most options or neutrality is untenable under these circumstances if we were trying to make a beeline towards a specific path like fascism or something like that but that's not what we're going to do because I don't know what the world is going to turn out like yet. So instead, we should just be a little bit more active. It'll give us a huge boost of political power, which is going to be very valuable. And we're going to get an event for the election of the Swiss president. So we can choose any of these guys because honestly, they all have the same effect. So it doesn't really matter. We're going to elect Albert Meyer here. And that is going to free up a slot, which we are then going to be able to use to get the first key thing that we need. A weapons designer, which is going to give us 20% research. Now, this originally was in the base game at 20%, but I'm pretty sure Paradox went and nerfed it and reduced that 20% research bonus down to only 10%. 
Which, mind you, is still a huge thing already. Like, don't get me wrong, but 20% is ludicrously big. And this is originally what it was in the base. Plus, material designer costs minus 75%. That is massive, and I can only imagine that when the next DLC comes out, that's going to be an even bigger deal because of how you're going to be able to customize your actual industries in the game. I cannot wait to play Switzerland when the DLC comes out. So yes, weapons designer, stupidly overpowered, and now we have 175 political power because we haven't done anything with it yet. That means next step on here, go down to the bottom of social order, and we are going to choose this one, Revolutionary Minds, because yes, this is going to cause us to lose 5% stability, but we gain an additional additional 10% research right off the bat. That's right, my friends. It is February 1936. It is one month into the game, and Switzerland has plus 35% research. Do you see how this may possibly be a little bit broken? It's gonna get worse. Also, when you have the political power, please do not forget to go down here to Council Diplomatic Effort because we don't know what other powers are going to be doing and we don't want to piss them off. So we're going to hit this at least twice to reduce the balance of power enough that we're going to be able to switch over to partial mobilization because this will reduce the penalty that we get towards war support from minus 30 to only minus 15. The right ascendant in France. Oh, God. Uh, uh, well, this should be fun considering that, oh, God, support of the right. They actually are going fascist. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Albert, Albert, what is your forehead doing? All right, there's mechanical engineering, which means we can go down here and get mechanical computing. And right now, 38%. By March, once this finishes in 130 days, that means we're going to be at 42% research. And naturally, because of the bonuses that we get to initial efficiency base, we're going to go with dispersed industry. Not only to protect our industry if we end up getting attacked, but simultaneously, that means anything that we start producing and we're going to be way ahead technology-wise, this means that we're going to be able to immediately start producing stuff at a higher threshold. And so in a multiplayer game, after these two focuses, you can probably do increased national budget just to put 70 days further ahead. That way you can see what everyone else is doing. But in this case, I can already see from the beginning in my game that uh, Germany has remilitarized the Rhineland, which means I'm guessing they're staying fascist. And then French, well, the, fr the, fr the French have decided to also go fascist, w uh, which means that I technically right now would be surrounded on almost all sides by fascist states, and that's not something that I want. So you can choose whatever it is that you want to do, but in this case, we're going to have to try to back the national front. Something that if you're playing a multiplayer game and you go down this path in order to support Germany with Axis Gold, that is going to be remarkably powerful and boost them up immensely. But in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it for survival. The National Front is the leading fascist party in Switzerland. And if anyone is going to take power in this democratic-leaning nation, it's them. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So that we can replace our building with a precedent. Oh, and there we go. Now that we have dropped from full cantonal power down to strong, that means that we got additional 50% war support, which means we can go over here and go to partial mobilization, something that is going to be necessary for us to be able to produce as much equipment as possible rapidly. Communist coup in Ethiopia. Uh, well, um, good. Good luck to you there, buddy. I don't know what's going to happen with the Soviets. There we go. That is the end. We've gone and improved relations here with Germany for the last little bit. And that means since we're above 30, we're going to be able to go down and do trade agreement with Germany, something that is going to be incredibly powerful from the very get-go. Fascism continues its terrifying rise. And while it may be a hard pill to swallow, allowing some economic collaboration might be what we need in order to keep the crosshairs away from us. Yeah, I don't want to get shot. There we go. August 1936, 42% research speed but check it out it's only going to get stronger we got 150 political power oh no hey export focus what about free trade i'm not building anything anyway for like a military that would require this so why not get an extra five percent research and five percent construction speed sure boom 47 percent august 1936 there we go trade agreement with germany which is incredibly stupidly powerful as it reduces our consumer goods by 10 percent and for the Germans, on the other hand, that is going to increase their construction speed by 10% and reduce their consumer goods by a further 5%. That is incredibly powerful for Germany this early in the game. And it's only going to get even more powerful once we open up Axis Gold. Honestly, I'm saying this right now. If you have a German player from the very beginning in multiplayer who teams up with only Switzerland and that's it, it's probably more powerful than if they team up with Italy, just by virtue of the sheer amount of industry that you're going to be able to crank out that rapidly. And there we go, another 150 political power, and here's what you're going to do next. Down here at the bottom of Nash, character you can get a state mandate state mandate is another bonus that is going to be dependent upon the type of government that you choose or rather what you do not choose and honestly, Will of the People is extremely strong because minus 5% supply consumption is massive, particularly when it comes to something like the Soviet Union or for Germany. But you can't really do that as Germany here because you can't be fascist. But in our case, secular institutions, the only requirement for which is to not be authoritarian, to not be non like 
unaligned, unaligned. That's the term I'm looking for, which means that you can get secular institutions and get 52% research speed before even 1937. And the only requirement for that is that you do not go down the path of this one, the Goddard Bund, that, uh, that, that one, the really powerful one that allows you to take all of the territory across the Alps. It's just incredibly powerful that from the beginning of the game, you can get these bonuses if you go for democratic or fascist technocratic Switzerland. And mind you, Again, it's only going to get stronger. I'm not done yet. Because, hey, next thing that we're going to do is reaffirm spiritual defense, which doesn't give any bonuses right now. Our confederation has been committed to the defense of Swiss national values since 1932 in response to the growing threat of authoritarianism around it. Um, yeah, uh, it's also internal, I'm just saying. Either way, we're going to go ahead and get that so that the next thing we can get after that is Pro Helvetia, which is going to reduce our consumer goods by an additional 10%. And now that we're trading gold through the Axis, it's going to give us an option to open up our banks to fascist nations. Now, in a multiplayer game, you're never going to have one of these players refuse this, because why would they? The bonuses you get from trading gold is just that stupidly powerful. I mean, you can get three levels, and for each level that you get, you're going to be talking an additional 5% construction speed for a total of 15%, minus 2.5 consumer goods up to a total of minus 7.5, 1% research speed each time for a total of three, and even a reduction of resource penalties. It's it's stupidly strong. I see in this case, stupidly enough, the Germans refuse to use our banking system. And I don't know why. We're just going to keep on needing to save up political power and keep on asking them because there's like a random chance every time that they accept. There we go, pro Helvetia. And what ended up happening is that although the Germans refused to trade with us, we did manage to get the Italians. So now the Italians, at least, which seem to be staying fascist, have the Swiss gold trade bonus, which you can see for in the beginning, an Axis power that already has a slightly bigger industry and more aggressive bonuses how incredibly powerful that is. And oh yeah, it applies to us as well. Which means that since we have that, our research is now at 55%. It is too damn strong. Not to mention the fact that we are at minus 12% consumer goods, which yeah, okay, awesome. But we don't need minus 12 as long as you're in the negatives or at zero, it doesn't really matter. So in this case, we can go ahead and switch over from National Defense Fund to increased defense budget, which is gonna give us some military factories and it's going to remove that 5% reduction that we had, but give us an additional 10% construction and 15% construction Construction to military and civilian factories, respectively. Can you see how broken this is? Ah, and here we go, the election for the president of the Swiss Confederation. So every year, the Swiss Federal Assembly is going to choose one of the councillors to be the president of the Confederation. In this case, we don't want to get rid of Adolf Führer, because even though if we use him, what's going to end up happening is we get a research slot after we activate his bonus. I don't want to lose that 20% research bonus right now. That is just too incredibly powerful. Because once you use him, he will not be available as a political advisor or Confederation president ever again. Meaning, you will have a choice. Do you want to be able to to invest and get another research slot early, or do you want to keep him along for that 20% research bonus? And in my case, I refer, I prefer the 20% research bonus. I think it's more valuable for what we want. So we're going to choose one of the democratic people, and we're going to choose another political advisor, which in this case, we're going to choose the corporatist, because yes, it reduces our surrender limit. It hurts us for many different capacities, but simultaneously it's going to increase our political power gain by 30, which is going to be massive. And we want to generate as much political power and have it in the bank as we can, because as time goes on, again, every year we will need to replace one of these advisors. And if we screw up and mess up the timing, like I did in my previous stream, then we will end up getting really punished with a bad advisor that overall hurts us. So it's fine. Ah, ha, ha, ceasefire in Ethiopia. Uh, well, huh. They ended up actually surrendering to the Italians. Uh, sort of. Interesting. Oh, hey, Poland is tearing itself apart. That, that's, that's some lovely stuff. So yeah, I guess with nothing else to really do over here for the time being, it's time for the petition of 200, where 200 members of a wide range of parties representing Swiss fascism and authoritarianism have presented this petition to the assembly requesting the interest of self-preservation, and we can start accepting and collaborating with the German Reich to, you know, protect ourselves, which is probably going to be necessary considering that we have the dawn of the Europe Alliance? Poland? Poland, I don't think it's going to work out so well for you here, buddy. No, wait, never mind. The Polish sanitation junta is fighting against them, which means, oh God, we could potentially have a completely fascist Europe. I didn't choose any of this, mind you guys. This is, this is all chance. Your games will not go as clean as this, I promise you. But okay, we have 150 political power and here it is, the final step of the initial stage. Everything that we can possibly do to initially build technocratic Switzerland. Go to National Ideas, make sure we've saved up enough, and 
and get Research Council because with Research Council, that means 5% research speed. That 5% research speed means that from the beginning of the game, we have 60% research speed 60 percent give us another year we're gonna get five percent here with computing machines and that's gonna put us at five 65 percent research do you see how broken this is any of these technologies if i want to research interwar artillery 67 days that's it if i wanted to go ahead of time right now to start researching the improved small airframe despite the fact that it's three years ahead it will only take me a year and a half that is it and that my friends is only going to get better kingdom of italy declared war on the italian union no no please no <laughs> Oh, Italy, Italy, I was relying on you. Why would you go fascist or Democrat or whatever it is that you're going to be doing here? We're still trading with you, right? No, no, we're, we're losing. We're going to lose our bonus. Are we going to lose our gold bonus? No, we're actually not losing our Swiss gold market bonus. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Then who who am I trading with? Am I trading with the Italian? I, I am actually trading with. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, well, it's fine. So I guess next up on here, the uh, the the, the Panamoraheim. There is a house in Stuttgart, and they call it the Panorama House. It's been the source of many fifth column operatives with the goal of destabilizing the Swiss government, opening the door for a fascist-led regime. Yay! How nice! Next up on here, infiltrate the federal police, because with their mandate to root out foreign propaganda and non-democratic forces, the federal police is an ideal place to infiltrate and prevent our own faction from being targeted. Eventually, this will also allow us to eliminate our enemies under the guise of national security. Because, yeah... I don't care about actual security. I just care about making other people insecure. Am I a bully? Oh, there goes the second sign of Japanese war. I guess things over in Asia are going to be uh, relatively simple. Even as France goes and makes things significantly more complicated. And here we go. Infiltrate federal police is done, but we cannot do closer ties with Germany until our balance of power is over here in favor of the council. So we're going to do another council diplomatic effort. That is fine. Increase relations with everyone around us. And in the meantime, the next step after this is to focus on expanding the Air Force. Because, my friends, the most broken thing about this entire build that I'm going to show you is coming up here in a moment, and you'll see what I mean. Wonderful, German Reich has accepted our trade agreement again. Every year or so, we have to renew that trade agreement, which I don't understand a reason as to why Germany would ever refuse it. it again, it doesn't make sense, but I've seen it happen multiple times. If it does, just probably go back and reload if you're not playing on Iron Man. It's a stupid little system that it happens. Why would the AI do something that doesn't benefit them? Or why would it not do something that clearly does benefit them? We don't know. Ask Paradox. Oh, also, I realized, despite the fact that we still have Swiss gold market, um, we can go ahead and open up our banks to other fascist nations because I guess the Italians are having their own little civil war here. So you know what? Why not? Wait, did I just see that Denmark joined the East Asian co-prosperity sphere? Under what circumstances, Denmark, does this make sense? You have realigned yourself policy-wise with Japan, and that's it. What? And with the Air Force expanded, that means that we're going to have two different sets of options. Either we can choose to focus on foreign designs, which what that is going to do is going to allow us to purchase planes from other countries, which is rather nice, yes. And simultaneously, it's going to end up increasing the opinion of whatever country we end up getting a deal with, which can be pretty effective when we're talking about doing things with multiplayer. Like, yes, that, that is something that is fine. But the more broken thing to do is to go over here to develop our own designs, which gives us an air research speed bonus of 15%. Which, okay, that's pretty nice all on its own, but you have to understand exactly what it is that we're combining with. Remember this, it is technocratic Switzerland. So we're going to go ahead and get that 15% bonus. We've saved up a whole bunch of political power so we can go over here to our aircraft designer. And oh, what's this? Another 15% air research bonus? So that's a whopping additional 30% research speed towards aircraft? On top of our base 60% that we already have giving us a plus 90% to research for aircraft? Do you see what I'm talking about here yet? Yeah, okay, buddies, here we go. Here's what we're doing. First things first, we're going to save up a whole bunch of research days in here so that we're going to be able to start getting ahead in terms of technology. We save up 56 days of research here. Boom, go ahead and select this. Immediately go over to engineering and computing machine. We're going to be able to get that in 76 days, increasing our research speed by, again, another 5%. And hey, why don't we go ahead and start working on aircraft engines Three, a 1940 tech that we're going to be able to get in 272 days, less than a year, meaning that we're going to have that towards the latter half of 1938. Don't mind if I do. Elections for the president of the Swiss Confederation? Well, yeah, we're going to elect the last guy who's a Democrat in here, and we're going to replace him with a fascist propagandist, because honestly, that additional 15% war support, you know what, I'll take it. I'll take it. That sounds rather nice right now. Here we go. Develop our own design. We're going to wait until it's one day before so I can show this. Perfect. 69. Nice. Now, check this out. Currently, what we've done is we have saved up our research here so that we have... 
22 days on one of these. You know, it's not really anything crazy. If I go ahead and select this now and I go over here to aircraft, yes, this one now says 258 days and that's going to drop once we get that 15% research bonus, but this is what I'm going to show. Improved small airframe, we're gonna be able to get it in 370 days as it is. January 5th, 1938, that's what it is right now. But if I just wait one more day, instead of that saying 369, with developer own design, that means this is now 343. But wait, it gets better. Aircraft designer, light aircraft designer, 320, but baby, we're still not done. Because if you manage to save up any amount of air experience over the course of this playthrough, what you're gonna be able to do is go to your officer core and there is something that not many people realize is quite powerful if you're able to stack with other things. You can spend 50 air experience and get industry liaisons, which is going to increase your aircraft research speed by an additional 15% for airframes. That's right, my friends. It is January 6th, 1938. And counting the 60% research bonus that we have here currently, which is going to increase by an additional 5% in 50 days, that means as it stands right now, we are going to have an additional 45% research towards aircraft, meaning 105% research to aircraft. Wait 50 more days and that's gonna be 110%. That is broken. And will probably ruin so many other multiplayer experiences because of how early we're gonna be able to get tech. Meaning right now, it's only going to take us two 281 days to get the improved airframe. We're getting that without any kind of bonuses whatsoever. Instead, we're going to be able to get this before the end of 1938 with no other time ahead bonuses or anything else like that. But we're going to get some. So improve small airframe, go ahead and get this done. And now we can go over here and complete fighter focus, which is going to give us a one year ahead of time penalty and a 100% research bonus towards aircraft. Again, very strong. With fighter focus research, that means we can go over here and improve small airframe if we switch that off like over here to aircraft cannons or something and then immediately go back. Oh, hey, look, we're going to finish this in 90 92 days, 92 freaking days. But wait, it gets better because the next thing that we're gonna do after that is go over here to expanded weapons industry, something that's going to allow us to boost our military construction even faster. And we're gonna start cranking out mill factories so that we can make an air force. Also because of the situation, I just got France to be able to trade gold through me, which means that I'm gonna start getting more bonuses. <laughs> Oh, we just doubled it, baby. Minus 15% consumer goods, plus 30% construction speed, 6% research. The bonuses only get bigger, baby. And now that we've expanded the weapons industry, you're gonna get two options. You can either focus on Swiss armor divisions and everything over here is going to focus on land development, but because we're already getting all these insane bonuses to air, why not just double down on all of it and get, oh, what's this? Three 200% research bonuses to aircraft? Well, hey, don't mind if I do then. Second Russian Civil War. Huh, well, you know, it, it probably took a while for that to happen. You uh, um, control an interesting amount of land here, actually. Wow, you actually took over quite a bit of Russian provisional government. I haven't seen them take that much land before. Huh. Oh no, they've got the white pox. But there we go, improved small airframe, and it is May of 1938. We are still 89 days, only 89 days away, mind you, from Aircraft Engines 3. And now that we saved up another 56 days, it's time to go ahead and start researching the advanced small airframe. 666 days, what is the equivalent of about two years. In fact, this is under two years, considering 365 days, meaning we will have 1944 airplanes in 1939. Wait, am I doing the math wrong? I am doing the math wrong. Okay, we're already halfway through 1938. Beginning of 1940, as it stands. But that's not gonna happen. Because with air research, we're going to be getting this even faster. We are ready to ramp up research and development of new air technologies if we wish to keep up with the enemy's advances and eventually be able to dominate the skies. And my God, are we going to? Because here we go, there's aircraft engines three. That means that the planes that we've been researching, we can go ahead and upgrade these. And if we time this right, since we're saving all this up, we're gonna be getting a big research bonus. There it is, air research. Eight of September 1938, we get those bonuses and those don't just apply to airframes. Check this out. We go down here to the biggest one, select a technology and oh, hey, wouldn't you know it? 200% bonus. We're gonna get aircraft engines four in 286 days, meaning only partway into 1939. Now we get Swiss heavy planes, which is gonna give us two 200% research bonuses for heavy aircraft. And then the air production is gonna give us that cost reduction. It's gonna be stupidly powerful. Cause here we go, 56 days saved up. We're gonna go ahead and take the small airframe, switch 
switched off to something else. I die, I, I don't care. Um, industry. We're gonna need industry. Even though we're ahead of time still by a quarter of a year, we're gonna get it in 72 freaking days, man. Oh my god. And on top of all that, with the 56 day bonus that we have, we go over here to aircraft, advanced airframes, 291 days, meaning halfway through 1939, we are gonna have 1944 aircraft. Holy Lee crap, man. Just look at this. The difference between what you were going to be utilizing at that time versus what most people are going to be having, most people at this time are still going to be utilizing largely basic small airframes or maybe getting improved small airframes if they did. But the difference in power between 1944 and 1940 is massive. I mean, we're talking 200 kilometers more range, 10 more agility. And when you equip that with the aircraft engines four that you're also simultaneously going to be able to get, it just means that your planes are going to be almost untouchable. So yeah. Let's do it. Hey, Ukraine fighting the Soviets. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Wait, Czechoslovak National Socialist. But when did you just puppet all of them? What? <laughs> Oh my god, this is a stupidly powerful Germany in this game. Elections for the president of the Swiss Confederation. Well, I guess put Philip Eder in charge because factory output plus 20% plus that weekly stability. If we activate his ability, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I will definitely take that. Ah, Germany claims memo and the United Mexican States joins the Axis. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think that moderatism uh, applies in this scenario, uh, Lazaro. I, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Air production, excellent. Now, finally, it's time to finally start getting closer ties with the German Reich because we have a powerful and dangerous neighbor to the north, and if we want to survive, it might be a good idea to stay on their good side, naturally. Yeah. And see, you didn't have to beeline anything politics-wise over the course of this game, especially when you're doing stuff multiplayer, because you won't really need to plan ahead until usually what ends up happening around 1940, 1941 is usually when those big fights break out in those games. Games. So we were just able to bide our time, build up our research and technology, and holy crap, you can see the result. I just realized we're at minus 23% consumer goods. Minus 23%. Like, I don't even need civvies at this point. I just build them. Well, I need the civvies in order to trade them away, which that's actually a bit of a problem for us, is we're having to trade away a lot of our stuff in order to get resources. So you know what, okay? German industrial de developments then. Get, get even more mills. Also, I just realized something. I still have the Swiss gold market from my trade with Italy, but Italy no longer has the bonuses for Swiss gold market because of their civil war, which means I basically just stole all of the Italians' gold. I don't mind if I do. Ah, uh, yes. The great rubber factories of Switzerland. Totally. This economy can't be stopped at this point, baby. And now I guess it's finally time to abandon neutrality, which is really going to hurt our stability. It's going to hurt us overall for a bunch of stuff, but we're going to need to start making a beeline down our politics path. And the reason we waited until now is because there really was no reason to do anything earlier when that just sets us way behind in both technology as well as industry. Yeah, Poland refuses the German ultimatum. Well, that's fun. Go ahead and train up all my militias, you know, crank out all these. Not that I can really use them. These things, um, these things absolutely suck, but it's okay. We just need to get the numbers out here so we can actually send volunteers and do stuff. Ah, Netherlands, also having a fascist civil war. No, wait, no, that wasn't. No, oh, that was weed. Oh, oh, wait, no, those are the Belgian fascists. Okay, well, that's uh, that's some spicy stuff. I like how I didn't set any of this up. Just the entire world in Europe just appeared to want to go fascist. I, I don't even know what to say. Now at this point, you're gonna have two options here when it comes to Swiss fascism. You can either go and promote Tobler, which is going to be the independent fascist path, or you can promote Hen, which turns us into a, a, a German puppet. And the thing is, I've done the independent Switzerland path. There really isn't much point for me to do anything here. I'm talking about about specifically building the build that I'm talking about making here is something that technically speaking is specifically designed in order to aid Germany or whatever other kind of power may go fascist here at this time at least the one that we're showing here you can do this exact same thing with the democratic path you can do it with the communist path though that's significantly harder to actually get down and so I don't really know what the whole point is in doing hand it's not like this gives you a whole bunch of bonuses besides the fact that you can request occupation of certain lands so you know we can just go promote Tobler doesn't matter. This is the Road to 56 mod, meaning that once you actually win a war, the player gets full control of all the diplomacy, so it doesn't matter. And in multiplayer, if you contributed a lot Air Force-wise or want specific land, you can negotiate that, so it doesn't really matter. Why would I give anything to the AI in this scenario? But that was Aircraft Engine 4, and we are 16 days away from advanced small airframes. Again, Poland Falls, middle of 1939, and we have 1944 aircraft. There it is. 25th of July, 1939. That is probably one of the fastest timings that I've had on that yet.
I don't know if any of you all that are watching right now can do it faster. If you can, please let me know in the comment section below. But my God, is that so incredibly broken? Because now, now there's no stopping us. We've been building up an air force in here the entire time, and so we can just utilize this to aid the Germans in whatever we want to do, volunteer-wise. Or even join the war, for that matter. And there it is. The super plane that basically nothing else is going to be able to touch. We, we have it. We, we, it like, what, what else is anyone going to do in order to be able to touch this, right? Like, it's not going to happen. Multiplayer-wise, you're going to ruin anyone's day with this. In fact, just for shits and giggles, there it is. The AC-25. Yeah, this totally makes sense. That's the super plane we want. Super advanced. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, excellent. I forgot that as soon as we do that, our cost of aluminum goes up drastically. <laughs> ha! Ah, well, that's going to be a problem. Well, I do realize here that now that we've done this, even though free trade is awesome for research, since we have gotten the planes that we wanted, we don't necessarily need to be on that. So at this point, you can probably move down from free trade to export. You still get some good construction and factory bonuses, but you won't need that 5% because actually controlling more of your resource resources is vastly, vastly more important here. Germany history. Did you genuinely reject my trade, Germany? Really? Why would you do that? Again, see, guys, this is exactly what I'm talking about. It makes no sense. Why would the Germans do this? I don't get... We're still above the whole thing with consumer goods. Like, we're at minus 12, so it doesn't matter. But still, why, Germany? Why? Why, why would you do that? You just hurt yourself in that endeavor. Oh, even as you're uh, murdering Ukraine. And then declaring war on France! <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, well, no, uh, t uh, t not not what I expected, because I thought that France was going to end up allying with them, but um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I can't exactly do anything over here, uh, even as Germany expands, until I go and switch out my politics, which that, that that's gonna, still going to take a second. By a second, I mean the most annoying factor about the Swiss tree, you can't do anything here for at least another, like, 200 days. Wonderful, because we have to do all of these. Yeah, German interest in Scandinavia. Uh, everything is burning to the ground. Great, great, great. That, that's exactly what I wanted in this scenario. Also, guys, check this out. Legal status of women. We can determine women's rights for World War II. And I'll be honest, I find this whole thing hilarious, but it doesn't necessarily make sense because if you know how things worked historically, women gaining more equality and going to the factories in order to work is precisely what increased factory output, not gave us manpower. I, I, I don't really know how that whole thing works in here. Meanwhile, enforced patriarchy patriarchy, making sure that they're at home in the kitchen, that somehow makes our men worth work harder in the factories. <laughs> I don't get it. But you know what? We'll go ahead and take it for that 7.5% production bonus. Oh, and hey, check it out. Improved computing is about to finish, which, oh, 71% research speed. Don't mind if I do. With another 5% on the way in 99 days. Wow. That's going to be 76%. And finally, here we go. Centralized Switzerland. That's going to go ahead and finish things off. Then we will officially, going well into 1940, be fascist. I'd say that's a cause for celebration, but that's going to sound really weird on the internet, you know? There we go. Switzerland centralized. And now we have a very sad looking man who's in charge here. Okay. Well, either way, now that's going to allow us to professionalize the militias, which gives us an actual army. And then we can finally, finally join the Axis, hopefully before Germany goes and finishes off France. Germany break? Why? Germany? Germany? What, what, do you, what do you mean you broke the Molotov Ribbentrop back? Did you attack Russia? I mean, why would you do this? You're attacking Romania. And from here, oh my God. Really? Really? You're the one that stopped trading my gold and simultaneously refused to accept any other kind of agreement. Wait, did I say the Republic of Turkey joined the Axis? Really? Turkey? Turkey joined the <laughs> Well, it looks like they're going to seize part of Russia then. Oh yeah, I forgot. Slack and standards. Another 5% factory output. Definitely needed to go ahead and get that. Until we we have 83% as a bonus here to our factory output. And from there, oh, wait, no, hold on. Uh, we were producing more. Oh, give me a second. Damn, this keeps on screwing up over here. Russia. And now Russia's declaring war on Finland. Really? You can't exactly spare this very much right now, buddy. Well, either way, now it's finally time to go ahead and join the Axis. Ah, that'll remove democratic unrest, which has been bothering us the entire time. And then finally, finally, we'll be able to fight. Ah, Vietnam is going against France. That's lovely. Yeah, but for whatever reason, the Germans still have not been able to push. Is fascist France really that strong right now? Or is it the fact that the Germans ha are, are surrounded on all sides and fighting on literally all sides right now. Hmm. Well, either way, it's about time to join the Axis. And you know what we have been doing this entire time? We have been building an Air Force, admittedly with lots of resource pain here over time. But that has allowed us to build an absolutely stupid Air Force of which a good percentage of these fighters are the advanced kind. The ones from 1944 that are going to absolutely dominate the battlefield. Look at the range on these things. Yes, the Swiss state joins the Axis. None can stand against us. That's going to cause them to have to divert troops to defend uh, my border, which in turn means that the Axis is going to be able to push through on this side, I'm sure. 
And now that we've done this, we don't really need to do anything else. There's no point in doing any other kind of focuses. Like, there really isn't. So, that means we can go down here to air production. And hey, remember that 10% reduction cost? We get another one, which means minus 20% aircraft production cost. Switzerland, by 1940, can become the supreme aircraft controller of the game. And we go ahead and join in and check it. Let's just bomb the crap out of northern France. Oh my god, that uses so much oil. <laughs> uses so much oil okay uh that's that's what we're gonna need to buy a lot of here um can i even do anything iraq iraq we're gonna buy some stuff i'm buying all of your oil it's still not enough oh my lord we are absolutely murdering them look at this 18 17 19 20. we are eviscerating the entire enemy air force like that Oh, really? Really? You think you're going to bomb my territory? Uh-uh. Nope. Nope. We are going to murder all of your planes that try that. Yes! Yes! Launch a push! Launch a push, Germans! Oh, my God. 70... How much damage am I doing to enemy divisions? Holy crap! Oh, man. Air support. Air support is just so strong. Look at these bonuses. Look, I can't even... I can't even look at them. The fights are finishing that fast now every time we launch a strike. All the Vestipole. Germany, you've, you've still lost millions. You've already lost almost 3 million men, and you just started the war. How? How? All right, screw it. Uh, looks like I have to do this myself and do concentrated attacks. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Yes, my Swiss brothers, fight France. Show them who has the best chocolate and wine. Which, wait, no. Switzerland doesn't do wine, right? No, it's, it's cheese. Cheese. The best cheese. I am the cheese. There it goes. Around some more divisions. Wonderful, wonderful. Keep on moving in. Let's take them out, boys. With air superiority, they're just moving so slow that we can surround all their units and wipe them out. I can't believe the Germans were having this much difficulty. The Swiss reign supreme. Yes, there's all Southern France taken. There's... Oh, wait, no. Monaco... Oh, I forgot that Monaco was still an actual state in here. Wow. There's another group surrounded. Destroy all these inside. Keep on moving forward. Yes. Yes. Go, my Swiss brothers. Our air force is absolutely murdering them. Oh, my God. How, how, what are the details? What have we done? We have bombed so many troops here over the past couple days. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the amount of bombing damage that is being done on the daily. Hey, and there we go. The French state finally collapsed. Excellent. Well, you know what? You know what? You know what's funny about all this? Because this is Road to 56, I can do incredibly stupid stuff just like this. Yup. Yup. As it naturally should be. Yes, the region of cheese. Oh, that goes on door. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're taking that too. Yoink. Yup, that makes sense. Which immediately means that we can just send our forces over here and start helping the Germans take out the Russians. But to be honest, at this point, are we, do we really want to do that? Like, the entire point of me making this video in the first place is that I wanted to show just how incredibly broken this is. And you all see how broken this is. At the rate that we're going, I'm producing like 12 planes a day, split between fighters and casts. And that is just going to increase as time goes on, especially now that we have more mill factories. Since we took all of France, if I wanted to, I could up my production and now from the very beginning, I'm making a good 15 planes per day. And again, that is only going to increase as time goes on. At this point, it would be impossible to stop us. And you can already see that we have 80% bonus to all of our research. It's... Like, what, what, what are we going to do? Technocratic Switzerland is easily one of the most broken things that you can possibly have in multiplayer in this game. And if anyone wants to try out this build and really ruin their friends' days, I highly recommend that you try it because it's a lot of fun. Anyway, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and end things here today because there really is no point to me doing anything else. Because it's the mod, I could take all the territory if I wanted to, and that's it. So without further ado, I'm going to let you all go. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.